shooter. This literally is where I saw him for the first time right here. It's windy. I just, I thought, uh, good to put a post out on Facebook. <laughs> so I'm looking down and I looked up and he's right here. He came from down the logging road. He had to have, and I'm trying not to move. It's windy. And uh, so I let him get over there and stopped him and shot. And, you know, interesting thing about this morning. Um, this is my first year uh, filming in the tree and uh, being filmed, filming myself, anything. And so Dylan, you know, he's full time and um, media content manager, does everything. I mean, he's my only employee, so you can imagine. But last night we sat, we saw Diego down below. He was 35 yards, kind of thick, didn't want to take a shot. So I talked about before we went out last night, these are 30, 40% sits, I call them, meaning that there's a 34% chance we're going to shoot a mature buck. Last night we were really close and I told Dylan last night, you know, this is those two sits with the weather and the little cold front. This was 11 degrees, 12 degrees colder than yesterday. This is an important set. Dylan's supposed to meet me at 5.30 this morning at the house. I uh, know Dylan. Uh, we're supposed to get ready and start walking in at 22, 10 to. Uh, no Dylan. Text him. No Dylan. Called. No Dylan. Um, by then it was 6.30 and I had, was about 100 yards from the stand. It took me about 35 minutes to get to that point, sweating like crazy, slowed down. There was in a little hole where I could get my phone out and not scare anything with the light and, and no texts or anything, no calls. And so I was literally at that point, I was getting worried. And so I uh, got a hold of my wife and she got a hold of Dylan's fiance. And you know what's happened to us all? And this is the first time Dylan's been 
working with me since May. This is the first time he slept in. And of all the mornings, I feel bad, I think, because I know he feels terrible. And, but the buck I shot, Diego, it's about the story. You know, we follow him, we've watched him all summer long. And on another property a mile away. And we, he comes in here, this is his home during the fall, which is something I try to practice and, and preach and teach to my clients and readers and viewers. And so we don't have another good morning to sit for five days. This was the morning to sit, you know, for right now. And so I came out hunting, I made that decision to come out here without Don. And it felt weird because it was the first time I sat with no camera for the entire year. And once you know, Diego was right here. I mean, literally seven, eight yards in front of me. Like I said, windy. It's about 20 after eight. I let him get over there, just gave him a little neat, and he stopped, and I shot him. Great blood trail. Um, it looks like it's a liver, and I, it, the arrow did go a little bit low. So um, we're gonna give him several hours, and I completely forgive Dylan. <laughs> this is not, not what- uh, Dylan doesn't forgive Dylan. <laughs> I, know, I think I think Dylan's gonna have a harder time living this down than me um, as a full-time videographer and <laughs> hunting film and for that he I think Dylan actually likes filming as much or more than hunting so this is big for him and um, I feel bad you know for him so but uh, uncharacteristic of him but we're gonna wait and we have a good blood trail I'm excited it's Diego I passed him up on October 12th or 13th whatever it was and um, after seeing him last night, I'll run it up and scarred on his back from scraping. and it's just really hard to pass him up. So, um, we're very hopeful. We're going to give him a few hours and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully be able to show you walking up to him and looking at him up close for the first time. It's been about 24 hours since uh, since I shot him. We jumped him twi twice yesterday. Um, he only went about 150 yards both times, less than 100 yards first time. So you think it was a liver shot. Uh, the second time we jumped him was six hours later. We were able to observe him for a while, uh, a couple hundred yards, going towards this bedding area we're going into right now. It's a pretty open bedding area. It's down in the middle of a draw, so if he's in there and he's mortally hit, he should be in there. Um, he shouldn't have left that area. It's just steep all around it. and. We've had several bucks go in there and die, so we're heading in right now, first daybreak. It's been kind of a sleepless night, and we'll see what happens. And we have our this crew. And we have our, our small tracking army, too. You guys think? Maybe we should find it. Let's go do it. day started in a bunch of fog this morning and looking for Diego um, we had high hopes walking in the you know, we let him set uh, overnight and uh, and we got out there we didn't find Diego um, where we thought he might be in the bedding area uh, but we found two drops of blood over about 500 yards the second one was in the bedding area we thought once we got there don't know where he went but literally no blood or very little blood very disappointing. You know, it's the bottom of the roller coaster now. Uh, we've been, had a couple highs and lows. I really thought we'd get them. Uh, questioning where the shot is now at this point. And, you know, it's really down to think about it. The Diego went on to the neighbors. We were able to secure permission. The neighbors are great um, in allowing us to do that. I was real happy they did that. Um, maybe we'll be able to look tomorrow. You know, he, they're hunting tonight, so it's not like you want to take a dog and go all over the place. They have some important hunts they have to do, and that's just the way hunting goes. He didn't stay on the property. It's, um, you know, maybe we'll be able to look around. They did say that they'd look for him tomorrow, 
so and keep an eye out for them and they'll get into some other areas that probably we didn't just walk into their stands and back so um i haven't given up all hope but to be honest there's not much left and uh you know this is uh this is how the roller coasters go sometime and um it's fortunate we don't have to go through this very often but uh i'm hoping for better news tomorrow we are headed to uh go take a look at diego up close the neighbors found him and i mean we have had such a roller coaster uh from illinois last week and we'll bring that part of that story to you and the last couple days of thinking we had diego and the shot was decent and then jumping him twice going back the next morning getting permission to track him and then not finding him and just really discouraged and the neighbors said they keep an eye out this morning on the way to the stand they smelled them and they found them i'm afraid the a large portion of the meat will be wasted which is horrible um but at the same time you know the roller coaster continues if they found them that is great news to to know what happened to them and we're going to go go look at them right now <laughs> Well, you know, it was a roller coaster of events, but um, this is Diego, and we get to look at him up close now. Um, it was a roller coaster. I mean, I'm so excited to be standing over him right now. He's a beautiful five-year-old buck we have some history with. Um, we have photos of him for three years. We've known where he's lived for three years. This is the third time we've seen him in eight sits on this property, and I can't believe we got him. You know, great, great uh, opportunity, Adam. When I when I took the shot, uh, we thought the shot was great. Uh, after he jumped up an hour later, it wasn't. Uh, we let him go for five hours, and then again, um, we jumped him again. We gave him another day. I believe my, I jumped him then, and we're able to recover him today, uh, two days after the shot. And I would have much rather, for Diego's sake, um, to have had this happen a lot sooner. A lot quicker uh, recovery but at the same time the perseverance paid off and we and we were able to harvest them and that's I mean to, to spend the time with a five-year-old like this and to close this chapter this final chapter of Diego I'm, I really feel truly blessed and fortunate to spend this time that's what it's all about I love that one-on-one -on -one pursuit this is our target buck over here uh, the one we're after and uh, it's, uh, it's you know sad to have it come to an end and not be able to hunt anymore, but at the same time, man, I feel so excited and blessed and had the opportunity.